Thanks. So today we have um, Jacqueline Crusado, who is a public health professional with over 30 years of direct service, supervisory, and management experience in correctional public health, health education and disease prevention, curricula development, program management, and team building across systems. Jackie successfully managed several large-scale federally funded programs, implementing, evaluating, and adapting interventions that impact primary care, housing, employment, mental health, and substance use treatment services. She developed a health liaison to the court approach with law enforcement, corrections, parole, and probation agencies in New York City and adapted them in other jurisdictions. So welcome, Jackie. And then Allison Jordan is a licensed social worker and a national public health leader with over 25 years of senior government and system management experience from procurement and grants to reentry and continent continuity of program implementation and evaluation. This work extended to New York City jail visitors where she helped create, implement, and evaluate a successful overdose prevention program distributing intranasal naloxone. Jackie and Allie were instrumental to the design, development, implementation, evaluation, enhancement, and adaptation of several past SPINS projects including uh, Transitional Care Coordination uh, NYC, a nationally recognized evidence-informed structural intervention in Camden, New Jersey, Raleigh, North Carolina, Las Vegas, Nevada, and across the islands of Puerto Rico. So welcome everyone. Um, I think, I know Allie and Jackie wanted to see some faces once they get started though. Well, I'll let, if you want them to, to go off camera, but as we're interacting and doing the Q&A, you can pop back onto video if you'd like. Allie and Jackie, I'll turn it over to you. Hey, so so great to see so many um, fun faces and um, shout out to uh, Hashta students and others who are who are joining us from um, everywhere from from New York to Puerto Rico and parts in between. Someone from Bangladesh popped uh, a note to me this morning, so we'll see um, how how late it is by them. Um, what we wanted you to do now is just to introduce yourself, your name, your pronouns, where do you work. Um, what's your role? Are you an evaluator? Are you an interventionist? Are you overseeing projects? And then just a little bit about what interested you in this webinar series. And if you want to just um, pop that information in the chat, we'll we'll give a couple of shout outs as we go. Um, but Jackie and I have been been uh, working together uh, since I don't know. One day I I I wound up um, at the health department and they. Um, they said, we'd, we'd like you to replicate the Hampton County model of correctional health and public health in New York City jails. And um, so I, I wound up meeting Jackie and I said, do you, do you think we can do this? And, and she said, yes. And I said, how do you know that? And she said, because we're already doing it. And here's how we're going to show everybody what to do next. And I think we spent uh, Saturday, what was it, Saturday morning uh, writing up all of um, how she would go about doing the, 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 the Hampton County model in New York City jails on uh, post-it, big, huge poster board size post-it notes all over our office. I think we went three, three times around the room um, and, that, and that very much formed the basis of what's next. So just know that this is, this is decades of experience and, um, and knowledge and, and lived experience uh, as well. So um, we just wanted you to um, know a little bit about us. Um, I'm a social worker. Went to Hunter at night while um, walking the streets of Brooklyn and making home visits. So, so we're this is a four part series. If you're here today, please come back. Um, we're on fourth fourth Tuesdays um, from noon to one thirty. You'll invite. We'll say till one o'clock until we can figure that out. But the extra half hour is for us to really hear from you. What what do you need from us? Um, and then, uh, so today, throughout the series, we're going to be making analogies to traveling because you may or may not have had an implementation manual. I see some folks are new to a HIV and they haven't actually um, done an implementation manual before, um, but but I, I'm hoping that each of us has, has had a chance to travel. And so what we're going to talk about is mapping a route to your planned destination in the same way that you would if you're going um on, on probably a big trip, well, maybe one of those group tour kinds that, that I try to avoid, but the, the large type of type of trip, not maybe your weekend jaunt. Um, and then and then just know that um, 
Along the way, there will be detours, and that will be session three. Um, and then finally, um, you'll have your travel log. And according to um, IHIP, you will be a dissemination pro by the time we get through all four. But we do not make that commitment unless you make it through all four sessions. So, so um, that's that's what's next for for us. And this show, and, and and if possible, have other people join us. Yeah, we're not. We're this will be this will be available, and folks will be able to. Um, we'll be able to, um, I'm sure, catch up and we'll, we'll provide some continuity, but we do encourage you to, uh, if you like this, pay, pay, pass it on. So we're asking you now if you have any current projects. Um, and I see uh, Jordan, you're uh, from Wisconsin and uh, her team are working on some many large, complex and multifaceted projects and they require intentional strategic communication. So this is ideal for you, Jordan, because that's the type of project that we're really gearing this to. Um, for those who are working on other implementation uh, projects and are going to be developing implementation guides for our HRSA project, just know that the the guide that comes along with this with this series is actually developed by HRSA, and all of the slide sets are using the language that's required and with the goals of um, of each of the steps for what you would fill in in each of the blanks. So we're going to take you through exactly um, the steps that you will need and from exactly the funder that that you're seeking here. Um, the, the folks on the shore project, um, very, very much looking forward to to um, checking in with you and, and CHA's um, CSH. Patricia Hernandez and I have been co-conspirators on many past projects, including Justice Involved Supportive Housing. And um, and Sarah, uh, Sarah O oh is an MPH student in my class in the interest of disclosure for grant writing. Um, it is also a patient navigator in the Mount Sinai network. So um, she she's currently learning how to write a proposal. Um, so she's this is getting her a little bit of uh, extra extra information about um, what's next in terms of once you get the proposal, what what's next. Um, and so you can see Jackie and I. Oh, Jackie, we we've been through a few a few HRSA spins projects in our time. The Part A program started with transitional care coordination, but you were doing something before that. What was that? Uh, correction based prevention program. We were doing CDC grants in the facilities, educating on HIV. Nineteen eighty five. Just the yeah. incarcerated folks. You you. you no, the corrections, all correction. Anybody that worked in correction, including correction officers. Wharton's captains, yes, and the and the health staff too, because it was all it was no it was all uh, new, and what was going to be next was the was the problem, kind of kind of uh, challenging times. So, so let's see. So the um, these are the projects and the locations. So when you're in a spins project, if you're fortunate enough to 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 be in the room where that happens. Uh, very often you're one of several demonstration sites. And historically we were able to collaborate with not just the, um, the lead of the, of the demonstration project, which, um, it, which is a, usually a national think tank kind of organization coupled with a national evaluation center, but with the other demonstration sites, such as those who are responsible for doing the implementation manuals. And we've had anywhere from, eight to 14 different um, sites that were part of the demonstrations that we were with. And so we wind up um, more and more having having um, partners across the country and um, and we welcome all, all of that new uh, sharing. So what level of experience? I think we're getting a good amount of that in terms of implementation manuals. Uh, the Miriam Hospital has been a great past uh, collaborator. Hey, Jill. Um, we, what past experience, if you had, what, as you rate for yourself, none, little, some, varied, or do you feel like you're an expert? Um, and then you can uh, you can submit that. I'm hoping I'm an expert. You'll all judge that when we're done. Um, at this point, we if we're not, <laughs> uh, we got a problem. So so yeah. So so work on that poll for a second. Um, and just know that you know there's there's a variety of ways that you can. Prepare an implementation manual in the same way that you could plan for a trip. And I actually know folks who just, I'm not one of them, but they pack real light. They might have a backpack. 
and um and maybe a little book like a little a little notebook so they can record you know where they went and that's it they didn't they didn't make reservations they didn't um find a hotel they don't really know necessarily where they're going so great so we have what what a beautiful bell-shaped curve could you imagine um and so thank you so 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 those uh, those folks would not necessarily need an implementation manual, and they may or may not even have photos when they're done. But those of us who uh, might be taking a larger trip with a bunch of people, we once went to Disney World with uh, 10 folks, my my husband's family. Um, and and so if you're going to do that, I, I strongly suggest that you make a plan and figure out when all the different things are and activities that are happening, um, who's going to want to do what, and then you know, what's the plan going to look like? And, you know, then follow the plan or don't, um, but know that if you don't, you know, there's some things that if you don't do them today, then you're not going to get a chance for them to happen. And I think that that happened a few times in Disney World and will definitely happen in your implementation manual. So if you miss a key step, um, it can have very, very much downstream consequences. I love all these introductions. Um so Jackie, in terms of the per, we have we have basically in the introduction section. Now we're going to talk about writing the actual manual. The introduction section has three topic areas. One is purpose, kind of like why are you making this plan? Why are you going to this place? What's the purpose of of sharing this information? Um, and then the who are you sharing it with is important. Who, right? Who are you sharing it with? Who's going with you on the on the journey? Um, and then who's the intended audience, right? So Jackie says, who, who's, who are you sharing with? Who may benefit from it? So this could be other people who you traveled with. It could be people that are planning to go. If you run a travel agency, it could be a lot of people. And then the overview, the, what, what the overview is kind of like the big picture idea of what you're doing. And it could be like a one-page itinerary or an executive summary uh, for those of you in class. But the but the idea is to just give a thumbnail view of what you're going to talk about next so that you interest people in what's next. And it also supports the work that you do. There you go. And so and so what do you put in the background, Jackie? So you have to make sure that you you demonstrate everything that you've put, uh, how you do it, um, document every single little thing that you do, who you speak to, who you don't speak to, who's your collaborators. You have to document everything that you do from step one. And and part of that is really having a map, you know? So so what is who are going to be the partners? How are you going to map that out? Who's going to be addressing which needs? Do you have um, need for housing and employment services? Are you going to be linking people to care and treatment as well as social services and supports? What's going to happen along the way if someone is arrested? What's going to happen if someone gets sick and they're in the hospital? What happens if they move? What, what do you do along the way? Um, and then looking at the priority populations, you want to make sure that you're addressing um, everyone that that could be in in your qualification requirements, and then really also talking about who may not be in your qualification requirements and why it could be set by the funder or it could be some other logistical challenges. Um, and then you know if if you were traveling, it's like why 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 are you going to this place? What are you hoping to learn? Who's going to be with you? And um and so on. And what why what's this place? Why this place? Why why this destination? Your goals um, and objectives, yes. Yeah. So on the pre before you even start, Jay, is there work to do before you start? I keep going oh. into that day when we're writing on the walls. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. So you wanna you, you wanna see um who's gonna buy in, who you're gonna be selling this to, you know, who's gonna go on this trip with you, right? Um, and then you start thinking, okay, if I want to do this kind of work, who do I hire? Who can do the work that I need them to do? And then you want to make sure that you get the right partners to help you get to the goal that you already created from the beginning of, of the program that you want to create. And I remember when we were when we were looking to hire and build teams, we were we were thinking about, you know, it was, it was kind of a yours, mine, and ours approach where we said, well, well there's some existing staff that are on board in one program. And then there was another program that was merging in. So we didn't want to keep the them in their silos. And then we were going to hire too. So we were trying to always have this, this um, collaboration of someone who knew the past, someone who knew 
um, a different part of of the elephant, as it were, and then someone who is completely coming with fresh eyes um, and, and try to think about that along the way. And then the partners and collaborators, if any of you have, have actually even um, gone into one of these projects, you know that collaborators are key on so many levels and getting those MOUs. Um, Jackie was so persuasive um, that, that we wound up with so many MOUs, we couldn't attach them all. And we wound up with a list of MOUs on a page and then attached a few key ones and then said the others were available on request. So um, I wouldn't let page limitations limit the number of partners that you include and, um, and be strategic about that. So gaining buy-in, who's, who's going to be paying, what, what kinds of resources are you going to be able to leverage from your collaborators, how are you going to sustain, um, all of these things get into, go into what to know before you go um, in a similar way as, as the travel. Thank you. And so, so that's the first part of the implementation activities. And then it goes on to another um, section that we couldn't fit on the slide set. It's all on one page in the guidebook. Um, but really, a, a second kind of section is okay. Now that you're on, um, that you booked the travel, what what do you do next? So you want to document before, during, and after. You want to keep the memories alive of um, you know taking pictures, or is there going to be a video? Are you going to do a travel blog? Is the um, people booking the trip going to keep track of that for you? Um, and then keeping maybe a journal or track of somehow of the highlights and lessons learned as you go, because you will forget. Um, it, you'll particularly, well, we, we tend to particularly forget the hard parts. And so um, try to remember all the, all the fun we had and, and try to put aside all the, the challenges because you don't want to live through that again, but you do want to document it so other people don't have to live through it again. And, and you should document it also early on because you tend to forget as everything changes every day. So you want to document everything day by day. So like that, when you do the implement of the annual, then you have all of it in one place and it's easier to, we learn the hard way. <laughs> so that's what we know that doing this work after have somebody download you or do something that you could document everything that you've done day by day, who you spoke to, you know, everything day by day. And that's the science part of implementation science. It's what allows you to be able to say, we, we had a method, it was based in theory, we implemented it in this way, we realized that that um, had its own challenges and we weren't including a whole cohort of people because of it. Um, one time we lost a number of people that we were that were eligible to enroll because they had been readmitted to jail, but they but they weren't um, recorded because they weren't newly admitted. They were um, sometimes people are on their way out, and then the police have a different idea, and they and they just stay inside. But they it, on the sheet it shows like you're leaving. So um, what do you call it? Turnarounds. Anyway, it, it, there's sometimes there's groups of folks that are left out of, of your project. And so you want to go back and say, we, you know, this cohort was omitted for these reasons. If you were going to do this again, make sure you keep this in your protocols and don't let it drop out of your data collection. And so um, that's always going to that's always going to happen um, in terms of planning. The leverage resources is really kind of an art today, an art form today, I think. What what um, people think of is money, and it's not necessarily money. It could be staff time and effort. It could be um, conference room space. It could be um, a van that someone has, and and you need transportation. It could be um, someone's got an Uber account, and um, you can you and you're the sender, but the receiver will pay for the for the person to to get to the clinic by giving you an account, you know, the, uh, a card for Uber. There's a lot of options in terms of leverage resources, um, and know that uh, partners really should be expected to 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 be fully bought into the process to 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 provide in kind. Um, and in, in the same way, you know, you're looking at best value when you're when you're making a trip, you might not pick the cheapest one or the most expensive, but somewhere in between. And so you want to do that with your with your planning because you want a good value, not necessarily a low cost. I feel like are there any questions about it? So, hey, Lisa, um, we have we have um, been working with you with with um, Yale on a project in Puerto Rico and Jackie's there now. Um, we're going to share with you some of the tools that we've that we've um, put together on that in terms of documenting the process. 
Um, now, this is what's in the manual, the document, the process, learn from the journey, um, foster dissemination and replication, and support sustainability. And when we look at that, sometimes we're not exactly sure what all that means in terms of dissemination and replication and future. So you want to document the process, but not just what happened, but in ways that people can learn from it. Um, you want to be able to pivot, adjust, adapt, and then figure out how to create additional opportunities that improve project outcomes. And um, the example, if, you, if you, there's a paper um, to share at all 2014 on health outcomes, um, and there were a lot of data elements in the Jail Languages Initiative, a lot, pages and pages, um, Emory, and it was a robust evaluation. But there were a few key findings that really led us to looking at project outcomes that were not on the individual level, but that were making improvements on a systems level. And that's what we pulled out in particular to highlight from this initiative. So it was reduced emergency department visits, reduced homeless shelter stays. Um, people feel less hungry, by the way, if they have a place to live. They're, if you have a kitchen, it's just, it makes all the difference. And then the fourth was, um, was feeling better. So there was a health and wellness scale. We used the SF12 version where um, we ask about health and wellness, pushing a broom and pulling a cart. Don't do the bowling and golf one. And so, and so we learned from that process. And then we were able to document outcomes that led to um, a quadrupling of the budget for this, for this service coming from city sources, not just Ryan White ones. So um, know that the manuals can, and the outcomes and the dissemination of them can actually um, build and not, not just build, but also sustain your initiative. Kelly and Jackie, sorry, this is Shelly. I, I do have a quick question for you all. Yeah. When you're, so when you know the pieces and the type of information that you need to document, um, you know, are there multiple people that are kind of assigned to document different areas or is it important for one person to kind of have that overarching understanding? What's the best? So, so we, so we had an approach um, because of our learning styles, where um, we met, we would meet every month with our community partners through the Transitional Care Coordination Consortium. We would be in touch with the staff through various supervisions, and then, and then we would, um, I, I called it downloading Jackie, and and then we would document. What was she up to as the project director? And then we would reverse that process, process and she would ask me, what was I doing as the principal investigator? We've done this also um, with the Puerto Rico team on the Yale project, where we sit with the interventionists, um, with, the, with the project director and the principal investigator, and then ask them every so often, so you plan to do this, what happened? Oh, that didn't happen. Well, why didn't happen? And this is why. So it's a matter of being very strategic, about touching all parts of the elephant and making sure that you're documenting all parts of the process, which is um, which it does require, um, I think, thoughtful dedication. Jackie, we have a, we have a, a slide on this in a, in a second, um, and what we're just talking about auditory, operational, and visual learning styles. If you pop that in, we'll we'll get to that slide uh, sooner rather than later on the implementation. So just pop it in your, or just know for yourself, do you primarily, would you rather um, listen to music or watch a movie? Would you rather go for a walk or, you know, so think about, think about the types of ways that you process information. I process it through hearing, auditory. Jackie's primarily auditory. What's your secondary, Jackie? Operational. Right. And so my and visual will be my third. Right. So it's not that you don't learn in those ways. It's just which ones you or your go to. Um, I find I am I am a primarily a visual and then secondarily operational. So we come together in that operational um, land. But just know that each of us and we'll, we'll see the results, I guess, in a second. But think about not only your learning style, the learning style of the people in your team, but also the learning style of the people who are reading your manual. So you don't actually know who's going to be reading it, who may be playing it on, um, you, you know, you can actually have your books read to you now. 
or who may be uh, one of the folks who goes to the back first and then looks up the pages that they want to see and goes back and forth among and between them. And so look at that, 62% secondary op- operational and uh, 62% visual. So, so yeah, so, so Jackie, um, more, more alleys than Jackie's on the, in the, in the audience today. Um, <laughs> and, and, it, and it's almost like 60, it's, it's, it's like 60, 20 with, um, with, you know, the other, the other, um, with operational first um, and auditory first tied. So interesting. Know this about yourself, know this about your teams, um, and and know that all of these um learning styles will be will be um tied to your to your um to your team, to the people looking at your manual and the people re- using it for the next steps. So the other thing we play around with is and this is kind of a uh, pseudoscience there are many types of tools like this we use the true blue color personalities it's just a fun breakout activity and it, it, it the intent is for you to think about who's on your team and what's your personality so think about we're going to do another poll um and think about are you a primarily strategic person are you someone Who's um, who works from? Uh, you, you have to have people who care first. It's always about the person. Are you an analytical type um, who who's just got to look at read everything first? If you ask, if you're asked a question, you don't even know how to answer it because you have to read everything about it before you can answer. Or are you adventurous? Are you zip lining and skydiving and just uh, say, I don't know, let's <coughs> figure it out, kind of person? And we'll ask. Um, so I am. I am this first and <laughs> yeah. So, so we had, um, we had a problem. Uh, I'll share with you. We had an um, interview tool and on it, the second question was, is this a person who cares? And we were rating people who were interviewing as to whether or not they cared. Cause we thought if you're working in a correctional facility with people with issues of incarceration, it was important that you had people who could be empathic to that to that condition. So guess what happens when you hire everyone based on whether or not they're caring? You wind up with um, data in the drawer, but not entered into the computer. Uh, so you do need, yeah, drawers full of it. Locked drawers, but nevertheless not entered um, we have very um, low, low risk taker folks in, in the room. That that, that is a trend we see in our work as well. Um, th- it is fun to have the musicians around. I gotta say, so um, you might want to consider that that you are um, in you're in a field where the adventurous risk taker folks are probably not necessarily applying or being interviewed or hired. But there are advantages to having some creative folks out there. Um, and, and, um, just know now we're going to, I think, break into a small group, one, two, three, and get, um, you to talk about this. What are the different personality types are all for in your team? Or if you haven't been on, worked in a team, you've traveled with groups of folks and how does it impact, you know, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it? If you don't have any adventurous people, maybe you're not zip lining. If you don't have any um, folks who who are analytical, you may miss stuff because it was yesterday. So um, think about think about what that looks like, and we'll and we'll catch up with you in your in your groups momentarily. I think we're in uh, three groups, Shelly. Yeah. Thank you. See you in a second. Hey, we were back. We were having so much fun in our group. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, you, they're welcome to join us. Hey, hi, Adon. They're welcome to join us at the um, at the thir- at the end. We can we can continue the conversations and um, add add more um, as we as we move into it, move into the uh, office hour section. I'd love to talk more about learning styles and how we're building teams, um, and then really know that. Um, the manual. So, so how was that? How was that experience with your, with your different, did you have different personality types in your group? Do we mix you up? Well, you sure did. (laughs) Yeah. So, so when you're writing your manuals, you're going to remember, you're not only writing 
um, with people who have different learning styles, your audience will also have learning styles and who knows who's going to read them. So um, th this is why, you know, little graphics, I always like to have moving parts and then the tech people are like, ah, oh, moving parts. So yeah, something to keep it, keep it going. Um, and then just remember, if you get to the, when you get to the manual um, directions, it's going to have these four things to, in terms of the purpose of the implementation manual and um, to document the actions you took, to report to the funder, to share with leadership the work that you did, and to document the final outcomes. And then most often, though we don't encourage it, it winds up in a file drawer. And so, and so what could we do instead of that is to really document the initial actions taken, the interim measures taken to adjust. I love when we're at, we're at um, so many of our project uh, meetings, people would be like, so what did you do? It was like, well, what, what was in our proposal? Well, how'd you do it? The way we said in our proposal. And, 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 and then the implementation plan looks like the proposal, but nobody's journey looks like the proposal. And, the, and I think sometimes they think that the funder thinks that, that it needs to look like what was in the proposal. But the reality is the expectation is that that's what the best you knew at the time. And, and that not only is what you write about, but the intervention is going to grow. Um, and so, Jackie, what, we, we had so many changes. I don't know if you have anyone in mind in particular of the ways that things change and I mean, we we changed a whole partner once. We had we had a um, we had a partner that changed hands in terms of organizational structure. So the people that we had the MOU with were no longer running um, the the jail in the in the Bronx, and so um, we could have given back half the money and lost a whole opportunity. Um, but we were able to negotiate that actually. We were finding, and this is in the Latino initiative, um, that, that, that there were people going to Puerto Rico and we didn't know where to refer them. And so we were in a Latino initiative with a, hot, with a population of people of Puerto Rican ancestry origin. And if they were to go to Puerto Rico, we had no uh, resources to refer them to, to document continuity of care. And we were able to amend and enhance and actually create a whole, whole new intervention because you know, our funder Urza, was was so um, open to us taking them with uh, taking them with us along the journey, and to make sure that the needs that were available were met. Yeah. Um, so this is something that we um, crafted for a number of projects. We shared it, and um, Lisa will will find it. Um, familiar looking in terms of um, implementation tracking. It's a, this is a streamlined version. In fact, I think this one um, page would, would be for a particular. So if you have a goal and then say three objectives and maybe sub objectives, this might be one of the sub objectives that you're um, that would take up this, this space. And we have an example for you that we can't review with you because we're um, running on a time. So um, if you want to talk in office hours, we can discuss how, how to put this put this together um, and to actually develop your implementation plan. But both in Puerto Rico and in the New York project, Jackie, how do we how do we fill this out? Day by day. <laughs> we have to do it day by day. So we, we would sit together, we would sit with the team, we would talk to the partners, and and then I called it downloading Jackie because she's the auditory learner. So she would speak and I would write and then um and then we'd read it back together. Um, and make sure that we weren't missing anything. And then um, the strategic person would say, well, how did you get from here to there? You must be missing some step. That might have been our project officer or, or, their, or their boss saying, well, how did, how did you know that you needed that? And so um, I think it's, it's, it's all teamwork and team building, but documenting as you go is really critical because I promise you, you will forget the bad stuff. Which is really where the learning comes from, right? If everything goes exactly the way you wrote it, you're not, you don't have that, um, that desire. I mean, it, I, I mean, the one I think of <laughs> in, in terms of that, we, we, we just had so many, yeah, we had so many um, things that didn't go the way that we expected, um, particularly in Puerto Rico, because we really jumped, you jumped into the deep end without a, without a life preserver, 
Um, and just every every single morning, um, Jackie was we, we downloaded Jackie every morning when we did that initiative. And then and then she would go about her day. And it, it was also cathartic in a way to say, um, OK, that was yesterday. We put it on paper. You told me what it is. Now what's next? And then and then help to focus to focus next steps rather than belaboring all of what you couldn't do and what didn't work. Do you want to talk about that experience from your end? It was a, a tough experience, <laughs> but but I did learn something that doc, that being able to document from the beginning to the end helped us a lot. Yeah. So I'm glad that we did that, that we documented it. Even if it was just a phone call, you need somebody to 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 tell, to talk to, to let them know this happened. There were not only bad things, there were also good things. Right. So being able to go inside a different facility that I've never been to, that was a good thing. Now, getting there and getting stuck there for three hours was a bad thing. <laughs> right. I mean, even in even in um, I remember even on a day by day with um, with one of the staff, um, we would we were doing nursing home placements for people who were incarcerated. So that was challenging. And. So we, I'd check in in the morning uh, with Brenda and, and I'd say, OK, so what's the plan? Yeah, we're going to get her out today and this is where we're going to go. And we got this place to go. And 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 does she have a code? Because if you get arrested in the summer, never mind. And so all the things that that needed to be on our checklist, she says, yeah, well, the plan's in place. And that would have been at 10 o'clock in the morning when I when I showed up. She was working from 730. And then at four the plan would be executed. And I'd say, so how'd it go? Did all this happen? She goes, oh, none of that happened. Everything that was in her plan at the beginning of the day had to be rewritten, revised and restructured in order for the person to get to whichever place it was because it was not w w what was originally planned. It was, it was very rarely what was originally planned. And so keep in mind that some systems can be very fluid, um, but with these collaborations and adaptations, the the intervention can evolve and then endure. So because you're actually sharing not just what worked, but also what didn't, and the problem solving approaches that you took in order to to do that. So we want you to remember um, to gain buy in from your staff, from your partners, um, to welcome the reader as well as as um, the people that you're working with, and to keep that. Um, continuously alive in terms of providing relatable information, things that people want to read. Um, and we've got tons of references. We're going to be back with you all. Um, at, we hope you stay for our office hours, but we also will be back in um, the next on the next fourth Tuesday, March 28th, um, where we're going to be talking about actually mapping a route to your planned destination as you start the journey. So all of this was pre-implementation activities. We're going to review all of those sections of the manual, the activities um, before implementation, implementation, and evaluation sections. And um, we have uh, tons of resources. And if there's something here that we talked about that you'd like, um, just just um, email us and we'll be happy to, uh, to do that. And we are, have office hours, questions, any questions? Yes, uh, feel free to enter a question in the chat or you can also raise your hand and we can call on you. So I have no, this is one of my learning styles is I have uh, no sense of time, but I have good timing. And Jackie has very good timing. And so maybe I'm only on time ever because Jackie makes sure that we're not late. <laughs> <laughs> I, and she has a, she, she does, she has a, um, a, an operational way of doing that, which I think is, is like that. <laughs> Come on, Allie, it's time to go. And then there'll be a tapping. Oh, so Allie and Jackie, do you have a, um, I guess a recommendation I can see, I, I love the idea too, of working together to document this, but you know, how I, how ever often you recommend it, whether it's daily, weekly, or I can see at, you know, after a while, people saying, oh, I don't have time for that right now. I'm too busy. Uh, you know, how do you avoid that? And what, you know, are there, I assume there's definite benefits in terms of efficiency later on that that accounts for. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, so it could be a quick check-in depending on what that is. And it doesn't have to be one person who's doing it. It just has to be documented in one place. Um, and so particularly if you have, you know, Google Drive sharing, whatever you can, you can do that. 
many of our notes are not pretty as, as illustrated earlier, but then at least quarterly, we'll, we'll sit down and go through together as a team. Um, this is what was supposed to happen. I have notes here that you said such and such. So it doesn't have to be an arduous thing to do in real life. It's just it's just being aware that you're going to have a quarterly meeting and somebody's going to ask you what happened. And so you're going to make three bullets on your calendar or have whatever your process is, um, a mental reminder, um, a tape record note, and whatever, whatever your style, whatever your learning style is, just make a, you could make a mental note if you're good at keeping things in your head, it, it, whatever, whatever um, place card holders that, that you want to, that you want to, Type your, sometimes I just text myself a message, um, it, you know, whatever's easy and handy to make that little note. I have post-its all over my desktop. And so, so when I meet with Jackie, I don't know, oh, I got to tell her about this person, you know. So whatever your way of remind, of setting up reminders for yourself, do that in real line, in real time. And then when you come down to having the quarterly, there'll be additional things that your team members will pull up. Um, we did this with um, we've done this with the folks at Puerto Rico in terms of um, documenting um, what we planned and what the actuals were. Is it, we, there's always it's always nice to have a column planned and actual so that you you give yourself permission to not actually do what the plan said because life is what is it uh, John Lennon life is what happens when you're busy making other plans we all know that um, so so to say we did everything in our manual and 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 move on is um, dissatisfying on on a lot of levels. Questions? Are questions? Yeah, I I saw a hand up at one point, but it seemed to have gone back down. So if someone has a question they want to ask out loud, feel free to raise your hand. And I lost my chat box. I don't see any questions in the chat right now. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. I mean, it's going to come back. And somebody has to join another meeting. So next time when you see the 12 to 1, make sure you make it 12 to 1.30 so that we can um so that you'll have time for the office hours so we can we can get a um more more dialogue going on and um and really adjust your specific things that you need. Thank you so much for the comments. The strategy of working together to document is really so important because otherwise you just know from, from that one person, you know, you'll know from the You'll know from the either the visual or or strategic person, but you won't know what the auditory person thinks if you do it the way the traditional way. Yeah. Or and and frankly, no one's hearing from the creative folks, which is tragic because when it comes time to review your proposal, you're going to want some um, some iconography or some ways of 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 getting people engaged in thinking or. Um, yeah, thank you, Lisa, for for popping in, and um, I'm hoping hoping you like the the tool we can share with others. And um, kudos to to the Yale folks for for all of what they're doing to uh, hepatitis C data to care. Oh, thank you, Adam. Yeah, that the, so we we have finished our first session, and we will stay for uh, for office hours. Chantal, thank you, and. Um, and look forward to uh, March 28th, where we'll hopefully see uh, the whole group. Bring your friends.